Hello, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, everybody. This is the Cody Show, and I'm back with another video, and it's talking about Deshaun Watson. Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson is speaking to the media for the first time after a new civil lawsuit was filed against him this week. His lawyer, Rusty Hardy, Harden rather, says Watson strongly denies the sexual assault claims that date back to October of 2020 in Texas. Harden releasing a statement today reading in part, quote, we will be ready to defend this case in court at the appropriate time, but don't intend to conduct our defense in the media. In the meantime, Deshaun is going to focus his energy and concentration on football, end quote. Now, Harden also said they're confident Watson will be vindicated. Watson told reporters this afternoon that he stands by the statement. In the meantime, the victim's attorney, Tony Busby, fired back at Watson and his legal team a short time ago on social media. His statement reads in part, quote, we reached out to attorney Rusty Harden's office for 10 months in an attempt to resolve this case. We knew this case was the most serious and egregious case brought against Watson to date. And our clients, who was rightly traumatized by these events, wanted to attempt a private resolution. Unfortunately, Watson's team, or maybe his lawyers, couldn't or wouldn't give this case the attention it was due. With regard to whether Deshaun Watson knows who this woman is, I hope that's his defense. He is well aware of what he did. This case is strong. And now that we have filed the will, filed rather, we have the will, we have will to pursue with vigor. He also says, I can understand, given the number of women that Mr. Watson has interacted with, that he could forget some or many of them. However, given the nature of the alleged conduct in this case, I expect this incident is something he would not soon forget. We look forward to a trial by jury. End quote there. We have the full statement posted at WKYC.com. So let's get back to Berea. Starting off with the play you see on your screen, it's a zone coverage concept. He's going to run a play action and then try to hit uh, a route over the middle. That's the way this play is designed to work. So when Watson starts this uh, play, so far it's going okay down the field. But as of right now, Micah Parsons is right in Watson's face. And we're going to see kind of the one thing I think we still have seen from Deshaun Watson, even in a Browns uniform, is he still is a very good athlete. As you see, he does do a good job at getting around Parsons, even gets around another player, although is still going to have to throw very off balance if he wants to make this throw. Despite that, he decides to try and push it down the field, and really, that was very close to an interception. You can see why he wanted to make the throw. There was a chance it could work, but when he's under pressure like that, he just didn't have the arm strength to get it down the field, which resulted in a near interception. So you did see, I think, the one positive, like I said, the you know him being able to move. Like, we'll go over to this one. Man, oh man. It's crazy that allegations after two years removed and settled, somebody would pop up and say that You roughly sexual assaulted me and, and battered me. After you done uh, 
paid, took care of 20 something women that had allegations against you back. But the good thing is, this is nothing fresh on Deshaun. This is something that just came out, just saying that he did, that they wasn't, didn't come out about back then. Because I guess it was a new circumstance and situation. It was different. And it weighed his toll on her. I guess that's what happened. But we're talking about Deshaun Watson. The Deshaun Watson that was outstanding in college football. <laughs> That Deshaun Watson, the one to the point before he even came into the league, they gave him Jordan type of player talks about him. And that that's the type of caliber of player that he would be. That's deep to be said amongst that name for football. But have got into the NFL got into the league and have not produced nothing but turmoil. Show big promise in Texas, Houston. Show big promise, big promise. I mean, but until the allegations came out and the things started to surface about Sean Jackson, I mean, Watson, not Jackson. <laughs> started to come out and we started to see a whole different person but somebody said <laughs> Woo, that if he maybe he just need another massage if he if he just get his massage he, he, he'll be all right you know he'll be all right because man that 20 20 22 from the numbers that I've seen on, uh, he, what, 30 touchdowns? Man, uh, Deshaun Jackson looked it, I mean, Deshaun Watson looked it pretty good. Deshaun Watson played that year. I guess he rebounded from his mindset and just changed everything. You know? But he, he did play that year. So, it's just amazing how things, man, take place. How it's like he can't get away from his past. It's like trying to hunt him, but I guess he didn't take care of everybody. Hopefully, this is the last of the Mohicans that he have to deal with. But the thing is, would this be the one that'll put him in a situation where he can't play no more football? because the NFL already had suspended him for 11 games for his first uh, situation with the 20, you know, 20 women. The 20 that he had allegations that was against him. I've seen 20, it could be 20. I, I just don't remember exactly how many, but it was in the 20. But. They say after the game that he had with the Cowboys and the way he played, in which he had a lot of things on his mind from what I heard he said his dad had had. But the way he played, man, he needed a massage now. <laughs> wow. But let's check out video on what the news say about this situation. More turmoil for Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. I'm News 5 investigator Scott Knoll outside Huntington Bank Field. Watson sued again, this time by a woman who says she was sexually assaulted by the quarterback during a date nearly four years ago. 
In the lawsuit filed Monday in Houston, Texas, the woman says she met Deshaun Watson in a bar while he played for the Houston Texans. The woman, identified in the lawsuit as Jane Doe, says she and the quarterback exchanged text messages for several months. Then, in October 2020, according to the lawsuit, Watson came to the woman's apartment for dinner. That's when the woman says Watson took off his clothes, laid naked on her bed, and, quote, aggressively insisted that she massage him. According to the court filing, the woman rubbed his back, but then Watson grabbed her and sexually assaulted the woman. Eventually, she says, she was able to get free, ran to her dresser, grabbed a, quote, heavy piece of decor for self-defense, and yelled at Watson to get out of her apartment. The lawsuit says the woman didn't report the incident right away because Watson was the Texans' quarterback, a local celebrity, and she worried how she would be treated. The woman is represented by attorney Tony Busby. If that name sounds familiar, it's likely because he represented 24 other women who sued Watson, alleging the quarterback's sexually harassed or assaulted them during massage appointments while he played in Houston. In 2022, after his trade to the Browns, Watson settled lawsuits with 23 of those women and days later was suspended 11 games and fined $5 million for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy. At the time, the quarterback maintained his innocence and two separate Texas grand juries refused criminal charges against Watson. I've always uh, stood on my innocence and always said that I've never assaulted anyone or disrespected anyone. According to the lawsuit, the latest accuser suffers from panic attacks, nervous breakdowns, depression, and anxiety as a result of what happened with Watson. She's seeking at least $1 million in damages. In a statement, her attorney said the lawsuit speaks for itself, but that we intend to pursue this case with the same aggressiveness as we pursued the others, adding, we want a jury trial in Texas. We reached out to both the Browns and Watson's attorney for comment on these latest allegations. So far, though, we haven't received responses from either one. In Cleveland, I'm News 5 investigator Scott Knoll. All right, so this article is saying that a woman accusing Deshaun Watson of sexual assault may meet in the next two weeks with the NFL, which is investigating the Cleveland Browns quarterback off-field behavior, the woman's lawyer said Thursday. Man. So she gonna meet with the NFL. So she is serious about what she claimed that Watson did. So I wonder if that's proof or just hearsay. I wonder. Well, okay, we yeah. We will see. But Deshaun Watson, man, I hope that everything works out for Deshaun, man. He can get past this situation. And this won't be something that will take him smooth out of the NFL and his chances of ever playing in the NFL again. I hope this is not the case, man. That he have a chance to even begin to change the whole dynamic of what his football career has been. But for right now, it looks very bad and it looks bleak for him even looking at his play on the field. Well, let's get back to Berea here. Nick Camino is with us. He has the latest from Watson's press conference this afternoon. You know they'd rather be talking about football. So help us understand what the tone is out there, what the feeling is today, Nick. Yeah, good evening, Christy and Russ. Yeah, unfortunately, here we are again, not talking very much football when it comes to Deshaun Watson. I've been calling it the never-ending saga that is Deshaun Watson, and what that means is not very much football. And here this week, a new lawsuit, fresh allegations with the new Browns quarter with with the Browns quarterback, and it, it, it's just you know here it is. I mean, he practiced today. He also met with the media here in Berea today. The Browns beginning their week two preparations for Sunday's game in Jacksonville against the Jags, but there's not much talk about football. Okay, a couple things here. Kevin Stefanski did admit today he never considered sitting Watson in Sunday's loss to the Cowboys. And then he said the plan is, yes, to start Watson this Sunday against the Jags. A lot of people were wondering, I don't know, do we see Jameis Winston? Are you going to?
sit Watson. But no, the plan is for him to start. As for Watson, he was asked how much thought he's given to the possibility that the NFL could come after him once again, once more for violating the league's personal conduct policy. Here's what Watson had to say. I haven't had any thought. Honestly, my focus is, again, is just being figuring out, you know, Jacksonville's plan on defense and focusing on my, my craft uh, to be the best quarterback I can be on Sunday for this team. You know, that's something that, you know, the, the NFL has to, you know, do on their time. And, you know, I have to focus on what's in front of me right now. Well, Russ and Christie, there's so many different layers that you have to unpack with all of this. How does it weigh on the team, the coaching staff? Everybody has to answer these questions about Watson and his what's going on off the field, not his play on the field. And his play on the field hasn't been very good either. So this is just this cycle and this saga that just will not end where it's here we are, guys. We are in year three now of Deshaun Watson. In year three, he's played in 13 games and we've talked very little football with him. And the football that we have talked about with him has not been very good either. So we'll see what happens and we'll see what happens in week two against the Jags. I know that's a fired up team that has revenge on their mind against Cleveland. All right, Nick, thank you so much. Appreciate it. That's crazy, man. What, with that being said, leave your comments down below. Tell me what you think about Deshaun Watson. Tell me what you think about this whole situation that he have to face all over again with this one particular person. And I don't know if there's more than came out. But, man, it makes you wonder, is, do he really have that type of, uh, you know, is something within him that he have to deal with these professional masseuses like this to the point where he wants them to go an extra mile and do things that's not right or is it that he got some kind of fetish or something within him is it a, a, a you know to where he wants to take advantage of a woman like that uh, but with that being said uh we're gonna leave that alone that's strictly a whole nother conversation entirely, but I hope, like I said, I hope that everything works out with Deshaun and we will see going forward how it works out and what comes of it with the NFL. So, with that being said, you heard it here on The Coldest Show. And I'm out. Watch this video, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about Deshaun Watson because it just dawned on me. Why is it that Deshaun Watson don't have a girlfriend or a wife or some kind of companion as a woman? Why is he a loner without a woman and he he must like women or want to be with women? A woman? Leave your comments down below and tell me what you think. And here goes Deshaun Stats in, for, uh, in 2020. Great stats. I don't know what in the world he was doing. He put up phenomenal numbers. And also the stats that he put in against the Cowboys, which to me shows that something, he's dealing with something. So with that being said, I just don't understand. I'm out.